Hello there, this is OK Tech Video, uh, creating another video for you on how to uh, configure a Cisco ASA uh, 7.2 this time to uh, connect to a, have a remote access VPN connections using IPsec protocol. Um, I'd like to apologize though, I do, am suffering from some allergies, so if you hear some sniffling, that is why. Uh, okay, so we're starting with an ASA 5505 that has been uh, configured with Internet Access and uh, has a very basic configuration. It's got no traffic going through it otherwise other than just outbound Internet Access. So our first thing that we need to do is we have to configure some crypto statements. The crypto statements um, tell the firewall to allow the inbound VPN connection using the IPsec protocol. So what we have to do is first of all we have to set up a transform set. Uh, transform set ESP three des SHA ESP three des ESP SHA HVAC. So gotta be in config mode though, that's always a good thing. Uh, then we have to set uh, the dynamic map variable. Uh, crypto dynamic. So that sets the dynamic, the, the variable outside dyn map to use that transform set. Then we have to enable it for on the crypto map. Crypto map outside map 65535. Dynamic outside dyn map. Now it's important here to note that this number right here is the uh, kind of instance number. And when you have remote VPN connectivity occurring on the same firewall that has static VPN tunnels, you always want the static VPN tunnels to have a lower instance number than your dynamic VPN connections. If you don't, you will probably have problems. So uh, always, uh, if you set that number right there to 65535, then you're always ensured that all the static VPN tunnels that get configured will have a lower number and you won't have any problems. So that maps the crypto map and enables it to uh, accept inbound IPsec connections. Uh, now we have to set up uh, IsaCamp. So ISA KMP uh, enable outside crypto ISA KMP uh, policy 10. Uh, authentication pre share uh, encryption triple des hash. Uh, group two lifetime eighty six four hundred. So that's just some pretty standard configuration settings that uh, <clears throat> are pretty commonly used. Also, another important command to use here uh, on the seven point two is this command: crypto ipsec. I'm sorry, is a camp isacmp nat dash traversal twenty. So if you don't have that command present, then <clears throat> users connecting to the firewall remotely, if they're behind a NATed firewall themselves, will not be able to pass traffic. They will be able to connect, but not pass traffic. Um, this command is required in 7.2 firewalls and 7, version 7 firewalls, but, and it is required in the old 6.3 firewalls, but in the 8-point firewalls, at least 8.2, it's been changed to be the default behavior. So, at any rate, it's always good to put that command in there no matter what. That way you're sure that uh, it's there. And if it doesn't show up in the config when you do a show run, then it's already the default behavior, so you're fine. Um, okay, so we've got that set up. Now we need to set up a local IP pool that the users are going to be assigned to when they first connect into the network. So if I do a show IP here, my internal network is 192.168.249. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and configure an internal network. I'm going to configure a pool that is a completely different network. So I'm going to do IP local pool, uh, IP pool, uh, 192.168.111, through 192.168.11.254. Oh, another important thing here is mask. 255-255-255-0. If you don't have, um, I gotta disable it and re-enable it. <clears throat> if you don't have that that mask command on there, um, it actually can cause some problems when you 
try to connect the device using uh, Apple products, strangely enough. Now I need to set up a group policy. So the group policy, VPN group 1, internal group policy, VPN group 1, attributes. Now we need to set up the parameters. So normally you're going to assign DNS information, domain name information, tell it what IP pool to connect to, those types of things. DNS server value 192.168.249.10. Let's just say that's my internal DNS server, 249.11. DNS server, oh, I don't need that. Now, um, oh, I have to go back to that. Default domain value, AD domain, local. So let's say that's my internal Active Directory domain. Split DNS value AD domain. Sometimes you don't need the split DNS command, but sometimes you do. It just kind of depends. Uh, that's basically tells the VPN client to always send requests for that domain to the internal DNS servers. Pools value IP pool. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we did not set there is a split tunnel configuration. Split tunnel configuration is required if you want to have the VPN user only connect and only transport traffic over the VPN tunnel that's destined for the network behind the firewall uh, it's connected to. So in, if, I, if I want to route only traffic going to 192.168.249 and through the VPN tunnel, then I have to set up a split tunnel. So to speed things up a little bit, I'm going to do a copy and paste here. So what I did there is I configured a, an access list called VPN Split Tunnel VPN Group 1 and I specified the source IP number as being my internal IP network and the destination IP number being the IP pool group that I've configured, the IP pool uh, IP number that I've configured. Um, now in the group policy we can configure the split tunnel settings. Split tunnel Okay, so now I've got a split tunnel configured. Ne next step is to configure the tunnel group. The tunnel group is where you set your actual attributes for your pre-shared key password. Again, I'm going to do a cut and paste here. Oops. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, I forgot. Syntax is different. On 7x. Sorry. Type IPsec RA. Now I can do the general attributes command. So setting the general attributes sets tells it what IP pool to use, and it also associates it with the group policy that we configured, which in this case just happened to have the same name. I keep them the same name just to make things easier for myself. Now we have to set the pre-shared key password. Tunnel group VPN group one IP set attributes. Pre-shared key, and this is the shared password. So that's my pre-shared key password right there. Normally, you would make it a little bit better. The one step that's left is we have to configure natting. If we don't configure natting, then you'll be able to connect, but you won't be able to pass traffic. So again, I'm going to do a copy and paste here to speed things up. Um, so I've configured an access list called no nat, which basically says traffic coming from the internal network going to my IP pool. And then I'm going to apply that to a command called NAT inside zero. So that NAT inside zero access list no NAT actually tells the firewall all traffic going through the firewall that matches the no NAT access list don't NAT it. That's what the NAT inside zero number means. If it's a zero, that right there, that's what that means. Um, another step that's left is to configure a username because we will have to be required to use a username when we connect. Uh, username, admin, password, password. Okay, uh, now I'm going to do a right mem, and we're going to try to connect to this and see if it works. Hopefully, if I did everything right, it will. So here's my VPN, VPN client. I'm going to click on New. <coughs> VPN connection entry test. Um, email IP. VPN group one, sh 
shared password, shared password, save, connect. I get prompted for using password, admin, password. And uh, it is connected, almost, thinking about it. it. Says it's connected, it went away. If I do, and this is gonna be a little messy, route print. I'm getting a whole bunch of other stuff here. But the important thing to note is my I have an existing route added for 192.168.249, and the destination is 192.168.11. Um, so that means the split tunnel configuration is working correctly. Also, again, this is going to be messy due to my local workstation configuration. Um, there it is. Uh, IP, there's my VPN group configured right there. My IP, my VPN, IP number that I've been assigned to, and my DNS servers. So let's see if I can ping an internal IP, uh, which is... I have one on 173, so ping 192.168.249.173. And I can ping it, so I am passing traffic, VPN's been configured, and it's done. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.